Hello everyone, my name is C and welcome to my channel. Many of you have become new subscribers and I just want to briefly say thank you and that I truly appreciate your support of this ministry. The Lord has been using me to share very important revelations with you all and I pray that this ministry can help you use these revelations to maintain your walk and relationship with him, okay? So, today, the Lord has given me another brief revelation or teaching to share with you guys, and that is the five key elements of adversity which are used to prepare you for a kingdom leadership role. Now, specifically, some of you may have been called into a leadership position, whether that is leading a church, ministry, community organization, or a business. But lately, you may have been experiencing an intense period of adversity, right? And you don't understand why. Well, today God is revealing the key elements of this adversity and how it is being used to train you so that you can successfully maintain and keep your leadership position, okay? So without further ado, let's get started with number one, which is persecution. Now with persecution, God may allow for you to experience a period where people are being rude to you, looking down on you, insulting you, laughing at you, or overlooking your skills, your talents, and your abilities. Now, this is probably one of the hardest experiences to go through because naturally we want to respond or clap back to these forms of disrespect to defend ourselves. But oftentimes, God will allow this to happen to kill your ego and to teach you how to have self-control in the face of opposition, better known as discipline training. The intensity of this training is ultimately used to build up your stamina and to get you to master the lesson of remaining still when the enemy is using people to provoke you to anger. This lesson is particularly important for leaders to master because a good leader does not allow his or her emotions to overrule their better judgment. Instead, he or she uses wisdom and logic to find a solution to a problem rather than an emotional response. This is what we call having emotional intelligence. Having emotional intelligence helps you to see situations clearly to make the best decisions, especially if you have been given a mantle to lead a large number of people who will be affected by your choices. A leader who often acts irrationally, is hot-tempered, or easily provoked to anger can make decisions that can lead a large number of people into dangerous situations sometimes even leading to fatal consequences. Take Pharaoh Ramses in Genesis, for example, who was so haughty and hardened towards freeing the children of Israel from slavery that he led the people of Egypt to suffer sickness, famine, and even death. In the end, God wants us to understand that this period of disrespect or persecution is not used to break us, but to humble us and to strengthen us so that we are not easily triggered or influenced by the enemy. Remember, there is power in having self-control when facing opposition. Think rationally and you will pass the test of this lesson. Proverbs 16.32 says, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Number two, betrayal. Betrayal is another key element of adversity that is used for leadership training. 
with this, God, you allowed a Judas to be within your midst as a lesson of being discerning and relying on God to make decisions. Betrayal may often come in the form of a close friend or family member who slanders or gossips about you or tries to do other things to sabotage your destiny. This is probably the most painful lesson of them all because you often never see this one coming, okay? But this is used to get you to examine your relationships with others so you can see who is for you and who is against you. As a leader, you don't want people in your circle who will use information to destroy your ministry, steal your business ideas, or give you the wrong advice to purposefully cause you to make the wrong decisions. Betrayal gets you to see the importance of vetting your relationships so you don't have snakes roaming in your yard and getting in the way of you successfully maintaining your leadership position. In addition to that, betrayal also helps you to see the importance of relying on God, not man. Those closest to you will oftentimes than not let you down for one reason or another, but God is the one that will always remain true to his word. Micah chapter seven, verses five through seven says, do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your bosom. For a son dishonors father, daughter rises against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are in the men of his own household. Therefore, I will look to the Lord I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Number three, doubt. God will allow for those around you to doubt your vision, your gifts, your abilities as a lesson to train you to have faith in God's word. Oftentimes, when the people close to us doubt us, we find ourselves doubting the call that God has on our lives. People may not believe that you, the person that is in their family, in their neighborhood, or in their friend circle, could ever be called to be a leader in some way. A lot of times, people have a certain perception about your character, personality, or intelligence that blocks them from seeing your true potential. For example, you may be called to lead a ministry, but those around you constantly recall the times when you were in the world, roaming the streets, and engaging in sin. These people may sow doubt in your mind because they are stuck on the old you and don't have faith that you could ever be any different than what you once were. Sometimes it may be coming from a place of arrogance and that they see you as of a lower status than them. You don't have the money, the titles, or the degrees like they do, so they doubt your ability and hold on to the belief that you don't deserve to lead. And other times, it is just simply that you are surrounded by people that doubt themselves, and therefore they will doubt you. If they don't believe that they will ever achieve anything like being a leader, a minister, a business owner, etc., they won't believe that it will happen for you. But despite their unbelief, you have to be strong enough to ignore the doubts and continue to have faith in what God has spoken over your life. Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 through 58 says, Now it came to pass, when Jesus had finished these parables, that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get his wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? 
Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Number four, serve thy enemies. The Lord may have you serving under someone who doesn't mean you any good. Now hear me out. I know this seems very counterproductive because in most cases, this person or people are working to hold you back from achieving your goals or to block you from reaching your destiny. But with this, God is building up your faith and humility. This lesson is very tough to go through, okay? It may feel like you have a large thorn that is constantly being stuck in your side, but this is used to strengthen you and inadvertently teach you what not to do as a leader. This lesson also shows you who is truly the boss in your life, and that is God. Take David and Joseph, for example. David and Joseph were placed in situations where they had to serve under someone that tried to block them from reaching their destinies. David served under King Saul, who became jealous and threatened by David, and later went on a mission to take David's life. Joseph was sold off into slavery to the Egyptians and was later falsely accused of assaulting Potiphar's wife, someone he faithfully served, causing him to be placed in prison for two years. Although these situations looked as if those in power had the upper hand, God intervened and made a way for David and Joseph to get to their destinies anyway. Through these examples, the Lord is ultimately showing that it doesn't matter what worldly title or power you may have. At the end of the day, he has a power and the final say in any given situation. What God says goes. And as a leader, you have to have it ingrained in you to respect that. You can't just get into a position of authority or power and forget who you must answer to. You answer to God. See, a lot of people get into a leadership position in some way and become consumed with the spirit of arrogance and pride. They make decisions out of stubbornness and haughtiness, failing to consider how their decisions affect their flock or subordinates. So this lesson, although annoying and frustrating as it may be, is necessary to teach you humility and to get you to respect and trust the power of God. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22 says, But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. And last but not least, number five, the wilderness. The last lesson of adversity that prepares you for leadership is the wilderness journey. The wilderness journey is where you go through a period of being stripped of everything you have, including relationships, money, your job, your house, car, or whatever else is considered an idol that you lean on for security or comfort. This is a test of faithfulness and loyalty to God and highlights your issues of idol worship. When God strips you of many things you may love or that you have built an identity in for worldly reasons, he wants to see if you will continue to serve him or will you turn your back on him out of spite due to your losses. The Bible shows us this lesson through the story of Job. Job pretty much lost everything because Satan wanted to test him to see if his adversity would cause him to curse God. God allowed it to happen because although Job was a faithful servant, he wanted to prove to Satan Job's loyalty. Job struggled with this test because those closest to him questioned and planted seeds of doubt 
about his relationship with God. Similarly, going through a wilderness period can often challenge one's perception of God. You may find yourself asking questions like, is God truly with me? Does he really love me? Is God really good like he says he is? Is God really a just God? These questions can flood your mind when you are going through such a tough period of uncertainty and hardship. But as a kingdom leader, God wants you to get to a certain strength in your walk with him that you can overcome those questions of doubt and keep moving forward. Not only that, God is teaching you that you must rely on him for everything, not your possessions and not the people around you. Sometimes we place emphasis on material things and relationships to make us feel secure about ourselves and our leadership abilities. However, when you rely on people or things to make you feel secure, you become more easily swayed by the highs and lows of your circumstances, which makes you unstable and negatively impacts your ability to make sound decisions. Overall, it is important to note that a good kingdom leader has the ability to stand firm in his or her authority, even when everyone and everything is gone, because he or she knows that God is their refuge and God is their anchor. Matthew chapter 25 verse 21 says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So that was the end of today's teaching. I hope that this word blessed you all and that it serves as a way to encourage you all to continue moving forward in your journey of leadership from whom this word is for. Please know that if God said that you will be king, you will be king. If God says you will be queen, okay, then you will be queen. But you have to learn certain lessons before you can assume your position. The position is yours, okay? But you must pass the test. All right? So thank you guys for watching this video. I love you all, and I pray that you all will have a blessed week. Take care, guys. Bye.